Hi, everybody. It's Christina Daves with PR for Anyone. Uh, super excited, super honored uh, to have David Meerman Scott with us today. Uh, I have followed him for years. He doesn't even know this, but uh, uh -huh. when I first started this about seven years ago, uh, I sped through your books and just learned so much. And um, for you know, people who are just watching this for the first time, I'm a do-it-yourself PR strategist. So I teach people how to get in the media. And right now with everything going on, um, the term newsjacking is what we use and you actually coined that phrase. Um, so welcome and- Thank you. Um, let's, let's talk some newsjacking. It's awesome to be here. Uh, I do need to clarify that the word newsjacking was actually used in the 1970s in the UK to um, reference um, essentially hooligans that stole newspapers from in front of newsstands and then sold them. So the, the, the word existed, I just um, started using it for what it means now, which is um, understanding the news cycle. Every news story breaks in a typical bell-shaped curve. And when you understand that news cycle and you have a particular expertise and reporters and editors are looking for your expertise, that's your moment to jump in there. Right. So knowing what's going on, and obviously right now, yeah. COVID-19 is, that's Huge. really 95% of the news. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, you and I have been doing public relations. I mean, I've been doing it for 30 years in one way or another. I've never seen anything like this where you go on, to, you like I was just on, and I can't keep away. I don't know about you. I just can't keep away. I was on the New York Times site about an, an hour ago. I was on the Washington Post site about 45 minutes ago. I go to Google News a couple times a day. And the top 20 stories are COVID-19. Everything else is off the page. Yeah. But the good news is most of us have an expertise that we can provide value to. You know, everybody is scared everybody and i think it's more fear of the unknown than anything we just don't yes. know what's around the corner but if you have an expertise that you can share now is the time to jump on this and i i mentioned to you i get i'm getting emails constantly from my clients who are you know hr people real estate people because the real estate market's really not yeah. being impacted uh health and wellness like there's such right. an opportunity and again not to sell right now not to gouge no. anybody but no not at all provide value give people relief and and knowledge and things that can help them what's interesting about this is and this is sort of the reason why this is such a big opportunity is that um normally when mere mortals like us are trying to get re uh trying to get attention in the news um we have to convince a reporter or an editor that we have something interesting to say to work into their story What's happening now that's so different, and it doesn't happen very often, is that the reporters and editors need us. They absolutely need us in their stories, and they are looking, they're searching frantically for people to quote in their stories. They're looking for alternative angles on the story. Um, a friend of mine, I don't know if you know who Vern Harnish is, but um, he just got a whole bunch of press because um, uh, he, he writes and speaks about how companies scale up. And he just got so, uh, a bunch of press because um, he um, talks about how companies are trying to keep the employees that ha they have on the payroll, even though it's difficult. Um, and in some cases turn them from full-time employees to part-time freelancers, but to keep them on the payroll. And that's an important story. And there's so many stories like that. As you said, there's, there's um, the real estate and wellness and, and all of the different things that you said. And there's always a reporter looking for somebody to quote. So instead of us trying to pitch reporters on our time, which is normally what happens, What's happening now is we are getting in front of them on their time. It's a really big difference. 
It is. And that's why I think what's really important too is content right now. Yeah. Get your content out there because the journalists are going to find you. They're Like you said, they're looking for experts in certain fields. They're coming up with their ideas of, you know, and, and we learn new things every day yes. about what's going on. So they want to, they need to write stories about that or do interviews about that. Uh, and, and knowing what that is and pushing content out. I think I told right. you when we spoke yesterday, I've been just doing nonstop videos. Like we're just yes. constant yes. because there's such a need for it. Yes, I've, I've, I have too. Um, I've also participated in a number of virtual events. I, I do about 30 or 40 paid speeches a year all over the world. And, and of course, they're all canceled for a three month period. And who knows, maybe longer. Um, and a bunch of events have now gone to virtual. Uh, but you're right. But you're right. There's multiple ways that we can get our um, our ideas out there into the marketplace. Um, the first thing to recognize, um, however, is that reporters are searching for us. Reporters are searching for experts. So um, it's a good idea for us to be in front of them in the way that they're searching. So. Um, I'm a big fan of writing blog posts uh, that have something to do with your area of expertise around a particular news story, in this case, COVID-19. Uh, I did a blog post a couple of days ago um, talking about what business people can do to improve their marketing while they're um, sidelined um, with this crisis and they have time on their hands. Here are a few things that people can do to improve their marketing, you know, when they're sitting at home twiddling their thumbs, um, as an example. And then if a reporter or editor out there is, uh, oh my gosh, what can people do during COVID-19 to improve their marketing? They do a search, perhaps they'll find me. Um, the other thing which I know um, that you do and that you talk about is using Twitter because Every, every reporter is on Twitter. Um, every reporter uses Twitter as a tool to find sources. And so if you use Twitter yourself to do a couple of things that come to mind, the first thing, and I know that you teach these ideas, so I'm not telling you anything, but um, uh, the first thing is that you create a piece of content um, somewhere else, a video, a blog post, a piece of content on your website, share it on Twitter, but use the appropriate hashtags. Uh, so in this case, um, COVID-19 is a hashtag that's trending. And then you could do several different hashtags that the reporter can triangulate. So hashtag um, COVID-19, hashtag wellness, um, or hashtag COVID-19, hashtag real estate. And then if a reporter is searching on those two hashtags because they're doing a story, and you happen to use those two hashtags, bingo, your tweet pops up. And then if you're pointing to something in that tweet, um, a video or a blog post or a piece of content on your website, um, and the reporter finds it, sometimes they'll even quote you without contacting you, which is incredible, right? That's where those Google alerts come in. I always tell yeah. people, make sure you Google yourself and see. Uh, so what would be your number one tip for people right now? You know, you're sitting at home, you know you can help people, you have this expertise, you know, do you, do you recommend Twitter, maybe even tagging a journalist on something? Well, that's another way that you can use the Twitter. So the first way is create a piece of content um, and it has to be value added, it has to be valuable. I always tell people the best way, create the content to reach your audience, but then have in the back of your mind that it might be found by a journalist. So in other words, always add that, always be valuable. And if anyone wants to check me out on, out on Twitter, I am DM Scott, that's D-M-S-C-O-T-T. -T. Uh, and so um, that's one way, but always be adding value. Don't, don't just constantly tweet willy nilly trying to get press, but rather be valuable to the people who already follow you. The second thing you can do, which you just mentioned, is if you know that particular reporters are right in your wheelhouse, right? They're writing about the thing that you are an expert in. Yes, you can tag that reporter on Twitter. Um, uh, you know, I, I always recommend doing it in such a way that you're clearly following their work. So maybe they, they're a newspaper reporter in the city or the town you live in, 
and they just wrote a story about COVID-19 um, uh, and they talked about the uh, effect on the local economy. And if you're in the real estate business, um, perhaps they forgot about real estate. You could tweet them and say, hey, use their, you know, use their Twitter ID. Hey, John Smith, uh, loved your story about the effect of COVID-19, you know, hashtag COVID-19 on the hashtag Boston, I live in Boston economy, um, in the, um, use the Boston Globe Twitter ID. Um, but um, you might be interested to know that we've done some studies on what the effect on the real estate market is. Um, you might want to check them out and then point to a blog post. So you're basically helping them to do a follow on story to the one that they just wrote, which you're clearly saying that you just read. Exactly. Showing them the love. So I say, make yes. sure they know that you're, um, and I wanted to share just as we're talking about this, Kate Rogers from MSNBC tweeted this when you talk about Twitter, but she said, finding the amount of PR pitches coming in that are not related to the stock market, economy, COVID-19, et cetera, really shocking, dot, dot, dot. Still surprised every day. I mean this, I mean this with as much kindness as possible. Please read the room. Yes. And that's so important. See what that media outlet is talking about. What have they right. already covered? I had a great idea for one of the shows and then I Googled it and they had already done it. So right. don't waste their time no. pitching your idea if they've done it. You've got to do that extra little bit of homework. The other thing that's really interesting is that some outlets are actually putting out calls for experts. Um, way more so than they normally do. I saw one this morning from CNBC um, and they, they specifically called out and said, um, looking for uh, business people who have been affected by COVID-19 who are willing to, uh, to talk. Um, and that's rare that, right. um, that a news outlet will put out, typically through Twitter, but sometimes through other means, uh, put out a call for people to help them. Um, and so being aware of, um, of what's happening is important. And, you know, sometimes the old fashioned way of doing a letter to the editor, or in some cases, some of the um, news outlets have ways that you can contribute video, like um, CNN, I, I think it's called the I Report. Is that right? Um, I, so. I think so. Um, there's, so there's ways that certain media outlets encourage uh, members of the public to submit um, video and submit text-based uh, stories in the form of editorials. And many times in a, in, in a crisis like this, um, there aren't as many well-crafted videos or um, articles that, you know, bylined articles that people write because people don't naturally have that ability to think, oh, how can I write something that's interesting on this breaking news story? Um, you know, I've noticed that a lot of the letters to the editor in my, I, I live in Boston, the local paper are about COVID-19, but I can't imagine the average person in the city of Boston waking up and say, oh, I'm going to write an editorial today about you know, a, by, a byline about the COVID-19 situation. So, so even the good old fashioned way that we used to do it 30 or 50 or 100 years ago might even work today. Right, and as you mentioned, you know, the, this is all that we see right now in the media. And, and, you know, if you Google news jacking and David Meerman Scott, you'll see his diagram. And, you know, it, it was, it's been breaking news, but it, it's still going to be hot news, but they've kind of come up with other stories. Yes. It, they can't just keep saying the same yes. thing over and over again. Yes. That's probably why CNN or CNBC, whoever you mentioned, is looking for real world stories because they've got to fill 24 7. Right. Right. And, and, and what's happening now, what's typical of a news story like this is initially it's just the facts. And it, this story is such an enormous story that it still is just the facts in a lot of the stories. So um, how many people have COVID-19? How many deaths have there been? What's happening in Italy? What's happening in China? What's happening in, in different American cities? Uh, you know, San Francisco just did a lockdown. New York is, is I think, either doing a lockdown or talking about did a lockdown. 
Um, those are the facts. But as soon as the facts are reported, then the news um, uh, reporters shift to what does this mean and how can I add color to it? So um, in the Boston area, a couple of days ago, they closed all the restaurants and bars. Those are the facts. That's what comes out day one or day two. In day three and day four, it's what does this mean for restaurant workers? What does this mean for food supply companies? What does this mean for the shopping malls that, um, uh, that have tenants who are restaurants? Are they going to be able to afford their rent next month? Um, so we've just talked just in three seconds there, that's a food story, um, a, uh, a worker's story and a, uh, a real estate story. And so any one of those things are um, stories that the reporters are working on. And I bet they're working on hundreds of other angles on, on the fact that was reported just a couple of days ago. Right. So this is a huge opportunity, like I said, to, to share your message with such a big audience. Yeah. So, uh, and the people who are jumping on this are seeing success. Yes. And, and to have that and to get your name out there, you know, in the media, and you know this, it just gives you so much authority and credibility and, and will do so much because we are all going to bounce back from this. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is, you know, our businesses are gonna continue. We've got a big blip ahead of us, um, but we will be back. So, so take advantage of this, learn news jacking um, and listen, that's really important. Listen to what those media outlets are saying or writing and how can you provide value? And you know what's interesting, um, Christina, is um, uh, your, your whole business is PR for anyone. Mm -hmm. And this is the moment in history for PR for anyone. This is our moment. Um, you know, yes, you can do it anytime, but it's, it's never been, I don't wanna say easier because I don't wanna trivialize it, but this is the moment that any one of us can have e enormous media hits. We can transform our business in this time of crisis. You know, I love the fact that you, talk about PR for anyone because that's the situation we're in right now, don't you think? I do. I do. And on that note, um, you know, please, please try this, you know, give it, provide your value, share it with journalists. Um, like David said, this is the opportunity. Please check him out. He is amazing. Like I said, Thank I have you. followed him for years. I have read his books. Uh, look up Newsjacking. You can Google it. And he's got some videos out there and you'll see the curve and you can learn so much from that. I learned so much from that early on. Thank uh, so you. thank you so much for your time. I'm so grateful to have you here with us. Oh, and, and thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You're helping a lot of people to be successful in their work. And so keep, keep up what you're doing. Keep up your good work. Thank you. Everyone stay healthy and we'll see you in the media.